Hello, my name is Joe, and we're going to be looking at the CR Series City Pack for Unreal Engine. If you find this helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. So, this asset pack, uh, the CR Series City Pack, um, there's a link in the description below, is an asset pack that I've created that I'm going to be continually developing in, uh, you know, adding things. Uh, you know, gradually building out, making it better and better as I, as I think of better ways to do things and, you know, improving quality and things like that. And um, uh, this is basically a platform for my series, uh, CR series, which is creation series assets. That means that the cre anything that's creation series can be used together and you'll know that the sizing will all be okay, they'll fit together and, you know, you generally you won't have any problems making them work. So I'm doing uh, this just to explain a few things for people that have purchased the uh, uh, the city and um, perhaps those that may be interested in purchasing it. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of what it can do and how I've done things. Um, again, this uh, I'll, I'll update like tutorials and things like that as I go along, as I add things and think of better things to do. So these may change as they go along, um, but I'll be sure to keep everything up to date. So the first thing we're going to be looking at when you load up the project is culling. Now, by default, um, we, what we will do, we'll just go to settings, engine scalability, and just make sure it's on epic or lower, depending on what your system spec is. Uh, cinematic um, uh, messes with the uh, view distance uh, quite a bit, uh, I assume, because obviously you don't need all of the, um, you know, if a cinematic thing you want it as, the, as best as you can possibly have. But we're, we're doing it from a game point of view, so we'll just go to epic. And um, so by default, you'll have these little, uh, obviously, little, uh, blueprint nodules and things like that all over the screen and if we just pull up here and hit G on the keyboard which puts us into game mode you'll see here that the culling um, enters now obviously when you're playing a game um, when you hit play here that's I'll just show you here what this will do is when we hit hit play here it's essentially automatically added the culling to it you can see there that some of the buildings are popping in and things like that that's just one of the, you know th th this kind of thing I'm going to show you where you can tweak this because it's up to you and you know what you want to do um, how how far you want the draw distances and performance and things like that but you can see here as we're moving back um, all the culling disappearing so to tweak this we can go into our uh, world outline here, type in cull, and you've got your cull distance volume. Now what we'll do is we'll just press G again so it, it, it culls the stuff. And what we'll do is that you can disable it here. So that will disable it. We'll come to these bits in a minute here. And um, uh, the, yeah, the missing road pieces in a minute. Um, and you can see here that it's put, put our city back as we need it. And this roof here, this will all be explained in a minute. So what we can do is you can set uh, your cull distances here. So if we drop that down, um, I've set it up how I think it works. But if you've come up with a better way, you want more things showing, less things showing, you can do that all here, or you can just completely remove my cull distance volume and create your own. Um, what I've also done is see these row pieces missing here. So what we'll do is we will just uh, say, select this road piece here and just go to our blueprint um, for it. And what we've got here is when we click on our road, if we scroll down over the right here to, uh, I think it's rendering, LOD, and I've given this a desired draw distance, so um, I just wanted a little bit more control on the road pieces than using the cull distance volume, um, only because that um, certain aspects of it weren't, weren't working as I'd hoped, and um, I wanted to make it as efficient as possible when using it. So now if we do that, that's our desired draw distance there, you can see that the closer um, the road is, uh, yeah, sorry, the, um, the, the road is uh, disappearing closer to the camera. That's the great way to do it. So if we put it back to 10,000, you see it pops back there. If you want to turn that off, all you do is you go zero, and then we've got our road pieces back. Now, these, because of what we've got here, we've, um, I'll just put this back as what it was. So we all know we're on the same page. Now, if we go to our prefabs here, we've got, multiple road pieces because we've got like the cross junctions and the, the things like that so what you would have to do is you'd have to go to your prefabs folder and find the road pieces so if we go to that one road click on road scroll down to our uh, rendering lot and then make sure the desired draw distance is whatever you want it to be if you don't want it to disappear uh, type in zero because that just by default stops that so we've uh, again that's applied to that that's the same with this roof piece here 
if we back off a bit there you'll see that disappears um, it's exactly the same principle if we click on the roof piece click roof down to LOD, you can see here we've got our desired draw distance that we can enable disable. Now I just thought I'd show that for you um, in case you want to turn off all of the culling and everything and you know you might want to use it for say a cinematic sequence or things like that you know um, uh, so yeah that's the first section we're covering um, on uh, the city pack. So the next section we're going to be looking at is prefab so what I'm going to do is just go back to this section over here so we're in a blank area and what we've got um, here is a prefabs folder so prefabs is buildings that I've, I've, I've put together pieced together um, from individual assets to create a building essentially or like here we've got a bus stop things like that you know drag that in we've got instant got a ready-made bus stop with some bus stop signs and whatnot you can do whatever you want with it um, so these are done by grid snapping so what we can do here is that we can say right uh, we want to I'm just trying to think what's the best way so we will we'll drag in a build in here so we'll go for this corner one here and um, initially what we need to do is make sure that our um, our height is the same as the road height Hang on. what we'll do first is we'll drop down this here and go to 50 and this is snapped to 10 50 or 100 um, I generally use 50 because it just seems to work better and what we can do there is just uh, turn on our snapping you can see now it moves in intervals of uh, 50 so it's less um, finicky what then we need to do to do is just obviously make sure that the curb uh, the corner of you know road piece here is level with obviously the other road piece you don't want it where it's got gaps and so all we need to do is just look at this that's 160 move to this make this 160 so now we are at the correct height so now what we can do is we can drag off of uh, our things um, buildings here so if we hold alt on the keyboard and then drag it creates a duplicate so we've got four four buildings here so now what we can do is we can say go to one of our prefabs I'll just make this a little bit bigger so we can see and we can say well we, we like this fire escape one here um, but let's have a look um, yeah, we use the fire escape one. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, delete this one here because it's the fire escape one's drawn. So what we do is we select the fire escape, right-click on the one in the that we want to change, and then replace selected actor with the name of that. So now we've got our fire escape. So what we do is we just align this up. So now what we can do is we can drag off of that again. We can do the same same principle here. Uh, we like the look of building two here. Drag off. There we go. So now we've got another building, and you can obviously continue this on and um, to create whatever scenes you want. Um, with this, as I say, it's important you have the snapping turned on. It just makes life a lot easier, as you can see there. That um, if I just uh, shift that up, we can apply a hundred, drag off, and it just makes creating creating a lot more quicker and efficient. Um, so yeah, you can see here as we, we can add stuff. We've got different um, ones with stairs, ones without stairs. Obviously, you match them up as you as you as you go along, and um, so very quickly you can create a, you know a variation here of buildings and whatnot to suit whatever you want to do. Um, we'll look at in a minute creating your own own buildings and things like that. Um, what we can then do is we can change the colors of these buildings now currently i've done it so that it changes things like the brick color the um surround colors here the wood color um i'm going to be looking in the in the future into a more advanced way of offering this um whilst also keeping things like um uh your draw calls and things like that down so that i'm this is something i'm investigating at the moment the best way to do it whilst keeping it as flexible as possible so what we can do here is we can click this building and we could uh, if we just click this little icon here, this will bring up our sort of file list here, and we can just go to our materials. So in our materials here, I'll just make this smaller. Um, we've got loads of different types of materials. Now you can put your own in. Um, it's no no big deal, you know. Um, if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. Um, so what we'll do here is these are all powered by material instances. So you can see here we've got a group, all these different colors, and essentially that's taken from one texture and then I've changed the colors and things like that here so we'll come into this uh, have a look at this a little bit later 
So what we're going to do is we select our building. So over in the details panel, we've got brick, concrete, wood. And so brick is the green, concrete is the gray, wood is the red. And what we can do here is we can say, well, I want this to be a red building. So we drag that into the um, brick. Brick. I, obviously, you can have a brick. I've got brick textures here, um, right way around. Um, brick textures here. Um, I've just done this sort of almost a bit like I think they're, they're, they're brownstone houses. Obviously, it's red, but um, it's just showing you. I've done this to show you that you can change colors easily and things like that. So you see there, we dropped on our red brick, and then we think, right, what we need now is can we. Um, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll scroll down here and we'll use this one so it's got a tile effect so we've got some tiles there and then what we'll do is we'll say well we want this matching so we'll go to our concrete and plonk that on so we've got a concrete edging here obviously do whatever you want that looks quite good and then we're going to change the wood color so we'll just scroll down and somewhere we have wood where is it there it is so we just drag that on so it's like got the same color um, and we think yeah that's the what we want we want that one and then you can go to the next building and we can say right we want this to be yellow and we're going to keep the gray as it is and we're going to keep the windows as it is so then we'll go to the next one and go right we want this to be gray um, and i want uh let's have like a darker concrete and we're going to use a darker wood so as you can see there instantly we've got very um quick very color variations here and um this is set up using construction scripts um it's one of those things that you'll need to understand blueprints if you want to create your own versions of these i've just tried to create this um make this so that you can create your own things very quick this is going to be something that i'm going to see if i can create a building generator or something that can help um people that perhaps don't have uh, experience in blueprints to help build a little bit complicated um uh, buildings and things like that but this is just to help people get started you know um, as quickly and as efficiently as possible without being um, over complicated so we got that as you can see here we've got very quickly we've built our own little sections here um, now what we're going to look at is how to create our own buildings so what we've got here is we go to mesh folder we've got all of these sort of um, we want to be looking at these uh, you've got ones here that are like say apartments which are full apartments which are all of these that i've merged together um to just to help it be a little bit more efficient but what we want to look at is the initial pieces here that you've got you've got like uh, doors here uh, stairs down we've got um if we scroll down here we've got windows um we've got shop fronts all of these pieces so what we can do is say we're going to go here and we can Go to our prefabs folder, up to you where you put it. I'll put everything in the prefabs folder just to keep it neat. And we'll right click Blueprints Actor. And we'll name this BP um, House. Then what I'll do is I'll just drag that into the scene and I'll just set the height at 160 so we know it's level to the curb. And now what we'll do is we'll double click on the BP House. And I'm just going to try and split this up so we'll see as best we can so you can still see it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a very simple uh house here nothing nothing overly complicated so what we will do is we will initially um go to pavement so we'll type in pavement uh, oh go to our mesh folder sorry type in pavement and we'll just get the uh straight piece you've got different piece types of pieces want some with drain covers some with dips in the road or whatever so we're just going to use a straight piece here so you can see here that that's plonked it in so what we're going to do is just rotate that around and then we're just going to move that up i'm just going to turn my snapping down a bit to let's try 50. there we go so now we know it's snapped to the edge and we're happy with that so now what we're going to do is we can go to our so type in door and it'll give you the door variations that we currently got um, i will build up on these as we go along as i add to the, to the packs um i've already thought of a better way of doing it and what we can do there so we've just dragged our door in and then we can just move that to the curb and um, just make sure that that is snapped lined up and then what we can do so we can do Control v to copy it and then what we can do is we can just type in say uh window and we'll just say we're gonna do a that type of window and then we'll do control v again and control v again and you can see here we've created, very quickly created our own building and then what we're going to do is just add a roof on top of this so then we can go uh 
believe it's roof. And we can say, well, we like that type of roof. And there we go. Now, um, you can see, as you, as you see here, um, you can change your colors individually here. Again, to do what I did with construction script, uh, with being able to change the colors in the world uh, like we just did with this over here. Um, you need to know construction script and obviously um, I may do a tutorial on that if there's interest in it um, but it's I, I don't want to get it too uh, this too convoluted and too you know mind numbing so we're just going to st stick to the sort of simpler things now what we can do here is we can go into um, you know look f for when our props and whatnot so if we scroll down here we've got loads of different types of props i'm just trying to find what some we may like um so what we can do is um doing loads what we can do is say we, we we want a window box so we can drag the window box in and we can then just align it however we want and as you can see here it's being popped into the world and you think yeah that's fine i like that um, what I do with the window props is I generally snap it down to 10 just because it gives you a little bit more um, uh, flexibility. Then we can copy that and um, straight away we've got our little window box here. Um, then we can say, well, I want a satellite, uh, you know, a TV aerial type thing. And um, what we can do is just uh, drag that up, position that however we want. Let's say we're going to put that on the roof. Um, so you can see here that basically what's happening is that as we're adding to this, this is being created in our world. So what we can do as an example here is we can drag off here and you'll see that for people that don't know is that as we're editing one, it's editing all instances of instances of this. So if, imagine if you had like 40 of these in this city here, it'd be editing all 40. So you're not having to go to each individual one. So say you made a mistake on something was intersecting where it shouldn't be. You're not having to go to every 40 of those and redo it. Um, so this is this is a great way of, of doing it. Um, I think you get the um, the idea of this this uh, adding things and building it up and things like that. So if I just type in air and um, say we'll go for the air con here. So as you can see, we can build it up and up and up into um, something that's obviously can be quite cool. Um, so it's really limited to uh, what you what you can do, what you want to do and things like that. Um, I'm going to be looking at doing sort of mini expansion packs for props and things like that to add more window, uh, more building variations. I'm going to be looking at different types of buildings, peak roof, things like that as well. Um, but that'll come come later. This is just to show you how to create your own because you might it might be that you're not happy with what I've done and you want to do your own or you've got your own props and you want to add, add to them. So that, that's a very, as I say, very simple way of, Adding that, we can go in here and um, change our, you know, concrete. We can make them all separate if we wanted to. You know, it's you know, not limited. Um, doing it this way, but obviously you can't change things on the fly to do this. So as you can see here, it's changed both buildings. Whereas the way I did it, it's just changed one at a time. But anyway, that's how uh, the basis of how to create your own building. So the next step we're going to be looking at is textures. Um, so when we go to our textures. Uh, textures here you can see that I've got loads of just almost tiling materials you can drop your own in here it's very simple um, what you do is that I've got these currently at a 4k resolution I would maybe uh, adjusting these a bit later increasing the textile density which is um, I won't go into that but yeah increasing the textile density for those that know that means that I can then bring some of the size of these um, textures down to obviously help uh, space hard drive space as I add more to it because currently I think this is about 1.5 gig I think if I are half the size of that it's going to go to about 700 meg so it's quite a big saving and obviously as this builds up um, it should get bigger and bigger um, but what you can do is you as I say you just drag your textures in these um, are based off of substance painters um, uh, export options where it merges the occlusion roughness and metallic into one texture you've got your normal map and your base color map and then all you do is you just go to your materials here and you can say duplicate one of these and we can say uh, mi red brick and then what we can do is um, I'll just rename that um, so mi um, up to you how you name them but mi um, in uh, sort of unreal marketplace terms of when you're submitting stuff is in a material instance um, so that's essentially what we've got here and you'll see why this is useful in a minute so then what we'll do is we'll go to our textures folder and what I'm just going to do is I've got some red brick texture here that I've just um, quickly got we'll import that 
and um, just wait for that to do what it's got to do. Then what we need to do is just go to our red brick, uh, brick occlusion roughness ambient and just untick srgb so that's um, essentially not teaching it uh, treating it as a color texture it's treating it as um, individual essentially layers in that texture so then what we'll do is we'll go back to our materials search for our red brick wherever that is there we go and now what we've got here is we have got our material instance so when you've got a material uh, a material a normal material what you've got is something like this where you've got to connect it all up blah 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 and um you know it can be quite time consuming so what i've done here is i've created a material instance so this just basically has all of the settings i think uh, we currently need you me whoever uses this pack and um, you can adjust settings and all sorts of things here so um you can see here we've got our base color our normal texture and our um, occlusion roughness metallic. Um, you've also got things for displacement, um, vertex cap painting, things like that, but we're just going to be looking at these here. So what we can do here is just click on this and type in brick and um, we'll just find our red brick. So there we go. And we'll type in brick again. We we'll find our normal and we'll type in brick. Oh, don't want that one. We'll type in, what's that doing there? I think that might be an unreal bug. What we can do is, that's not letting us do that, so what we'll do is we we'll go textures and we'll just drag that in. So there we go. So this has set up our uh, texture here uh, as we want it. So now what we can do is we can go back to um, the editor. We'll save that first. And we will go back to the editor. And then what we can do in theory is if we select this building here, and we can go materials, uh, red brick, and you can see here we've tiled the brick. So we've got an option in there, it's going the, the tile's going the wrong way, but we've got an option here, simple. What we can do is open that up and we can go rotate material and I believe it's 0.25 and uh, there you go, it's rotated it. Now, I haven't got the best uh, uh, material here, um, but it does the job for the purpose of the tutorial. Um, we can, do that we can turn off the color saturation here so you can see that the brick gets uh, warmer in our scene um, you can see there it looks it looks all right at a distance um, doesn't look too bad close up either um, so what we yeah as I say we've got all these options here we can make it uh, less saturated so it's more of a, a gray brick I'm trying to do the best I can here to show you uh, more of a gray brick we can make it more of an orange brick you know whatever we can turn that off we can uh, adjust the color here as you can see there so if you wanted a painted type brick uh, you've got the tiling amount so if you wanted it more tiled or bigger bricks we've got that option there um seen the rotate material that we've got overrides for the metallic so you know for whatever if, if you wanted this brick to be really metallic you can um not that you ever would unless you're doing something really crazy and weird <laughs> um so yeah we've got quite a few options here and you can see how easy it is there to add your own uh own textures to the scene you know you're not limited to what i've got there um so now we're going to look at merging meshes so we'll go back to our uh building here now you'll notice that if you go to meshes that i have um let's have a looky these here are all merged into one, one mesh. Now, these are actually all individual pieces that I've put together and then merged. The reason being is that what this does is this reduces the texture so it matches up the texture name. So it'll look for here, brick, and anything uh, that's named brick. So one, two, three, four, there were four um, instances of brick here. So it, what it's done is merged all of these together. And the same with the wood and same. So what it does is it helps with draw calls and um, overall cleanness, I guess, um, and performance when you're doing things like construction script and whatnot. Um, so how we do that is that currently, as you see here, we've got our BP house and we've got three different types of textures here. So what we'll do is we'll just set these all back to, oh, all the uh, materials back to default. If I press the right one, there we go. So you can see here, these are all separate. And again, you can see all the materials over here, they're all slightly different. And um, you know, that could, as I say, this just helps. You don't have to do it, it's up to you what you do, you know, but this, for me, I found this just helped uh, gain a, a quite a big performance increase. So what we can do is we can select our prefab and we need to zero it out so that it's always, um, whenever we drop it in, it's always being dropped on the axis here. 
So what we do is we'll just go click on our prefab that we've created, go zero, zero, and zero, and then just press F on the keyboard to find it. So that's taken us all the way here. It's behind this building here. So what I'll do just for the purposes of this is I'll just delete this building so we can see it. So what we then do is we click on it and we go down to merge actors. And this brings up this window. So this is telling you all the meshes it's gonna to merge together. Um, for me, what I did is I separated the props from the building, but just for the purpose of this, we're just gonna merge the whole lot together. So again, right click, merge actors, uh, pivot point at zero, like that. Merge actors, and then it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it, so we'll just name that, leave that as it is. It's gonna merge them all together, depending on how complicated the mesh is, um, depends on the time that it takes. So now what we can do is we've got a new, just zip back over here, um, We've got our mesh, so we can just plonk that in, go 160, so we all know it's back as it was, and we'll line that up, and now we've got a static mesh, um, rather than a blueprint. So you can see here that we've got our textures uh, all together here. Um, some of these have been merged, like you might think, well, why haven't metals been merged with metals? Because they're different textures within the metals. Um, again, this is going to be something I'm going to be looking at to see if I can come up with a better way of doing it, maybe try and get as many things as on one texture sheet, things like that. But currently, it, it's working fine. I haven't noticed any massive performance decreases, so it's all good. But you can see there, now we've got a static mesh. If we go back to this one, it's a blueprint. If we go to this one, it's a static mesh. So what will happen now is that we can just go here and say, well, I want this to be, let's just go down here, brown. You can see that's changed everything to brown. Um, whereas in here, we had to go to each individual mesh and change the color here. So if we want it to be brown, you have to do that. So this has made, as I say, made it all a static mesh. Uh, it's really up to you how you decide to use that. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please do like, subscribe, and thank you for your support for anybody that's uh, purchased it. Um, I will be updating this. I'm going to try and do some sort of update every month to it. Um, I've already come up with loads of little uh, ideas that will help people and improve uh, you know, their scenes and whatnot. So yeah, uh, thanks again and cheers.